Good afternoon. I'm David Summers. I'm the publisher of the Long Beach Post and the Long Beach Business Journal. Today, this afternoon, we're continuing our live conversations with community leaders, with the, the heads of civic institutions, other thought leaders on how the coronavirus pandemic is impacting our community. Uh, today, we have the benefit of having uh, Lou Ann Bynum, who is the interim superintendent and president of City College, Long Beach City College, uh, join us. And I want to welcome you, Luann. Thank you for doing this with us. You have uh, arrived in this, this job at a, a really amazing moment in time. Um, I, I, I want to just tell people up front that you're coming back to City College after a long career uh, as an executive, as a, a leader at City College. Um, can you tell us first a little bit about your background and, and, and why you came back to City College now? Thank you, Dave, and thanks for the opportunity to be able to talk about the college. Um, I had retired about two and a half years ago and um, uh, was happy in retirement, um, but I got a call uh, about a month ago, I guess it is, to see if I'd be interested in coming back and helping the college as their interim superintendent president. So, of course, I said yes. You know, my first love is education. And um, my first college that I love is Long Beach City College. I've, I've had opportunities to maybe go to other places, but for me, it's my, this is my city, this is my home, and this is my college. And so it was a no-brainer for me to be able to come back and help. You, uh, in retirement, you've still been very active in the community. You uh, have been uh, on the Harbor Commission for a while. Most recently, I think you were the secretary of the Harbor Commission. You've served as president and, and vice president. Yes. Um, you, as we were talking before this, you, you talked a, a lot about the economic development. Before we, we talk about uh, City College some more, I, I'm, I'm hoping you can set, sh shed some light on, on the port and, and, and your perspective, uh, having been on the Harbor Commission, about the port's role in, in the recovery of the city on the other side of this. Well, my second love was being on the Harbor Commission for the port. You know, for me, it was a great fit because it's economic development. Um, we're really fortunate to have the port here. You know, there was a recent economic impact report that was done at the port. And now we have one in five jobs in the city of Long Beach that are tied to the port. The volumes are down a little bit, of course. You know, that, that um, happens periodically. Uh, tariffs and now this thing with the coronavirus. But I just heard from a freight forwarder the other day that ships are about halfway across the Pacific coming because they're starting to move their volume and their goods. And um, I know the port's gonna bounce back. Um, it always does, it's an, in great hands, but you know, the port is, a, is, is an engine for us and it's gonna help us all as a city to be able to bounce back when this is all over. I want to encourage anyone watching out there that we can um, take your questions live. So in the comment sections on our social media feeds, if you have any questions about what's going on at City College questions for, uh, Luann Bynum, the interim superintendent president, please send them in and we're I'm taking a look at them here on my phone. So uh, we uh, appreciate your questions. The next question that I wanna ask is, I, I remember that from your uh, appointment, it was not only your interim appointment, but also the trustees voting on an emergency declaration at the same time. That was really a, a, a one-two punch is, is you had to take action immediately uh, on behalf of the, the, the community college district. I, what were those first hours like? What were some of the things that you had to do in those first days and hours? Well, it started almost immediately after the board meeting. Um, you know, the board trustees have been amazing. They've, they've exhibited such great support and leadership for us going through this at the college, but they also did an emergency declaration, which allows us and allows me as an interim superintendent president to make some decisions without having to go through the usual hoops and some of the bureaucracy that we do. Um, that was, I was appointed on uh, March 14th. I met uh, immediately with the VPs via a conference call on Sunday. On Sunday, we were talking about um, slowing down and maybe phasing in a close of the college, you know, in response to what was going on with the COVID-19. Um, By Monday night, we had made a decision to close the campus the next day. So I never thought that I would come and the first thing I would do is close the two campuses. 
um, as, um, as the interim superintendent president. But it was the right thing to do. You know, we ended up putting courses online. 80% of our courses went online by Wednesday. That was the 18th. And now we're into week two of that. And um, with all the challenges going on and, and uh, um, the work of the staff and faculty have, have been phenomenal, um, it's going fairly well. You're, <coughs> excuse me, you're obviously in the, in the office, but I imagine it's a very different scene on the campuses. What, what's it like? Is it, is it as empty as the rest of downtown? What is the, 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 the vibe like on the, on the campus right now? It's very odd without having students on the campus. You know, when students are on the campus and walking back and forth and whether they're looking at their phones or they've got their books on their backs or they're talking with each other and laughing, um, it gives a vitality to the campus and, a, and a, a kind of a passion during the day that reminds us why we're here. So I show up um, a couple of weeks ago and um, within two days, the campus is pretty much deserted. We have all of the faculty and staff working remotely. That happened um, immediately. Um, by the end of the first week I was here, we had identified essential staff, but miss, not having the students on campus is very odd. It's kind of like, it reminds me of that picture I saw at um, Times Square in New York and how active and busy that is. And um, now our campus is just kind of, it looks like maybe a, Friday afternoon in the summer at six o'clock when nobody's usually here, but we're really looking forward to getting our students back and our faculty back. You talked about how quickly the faculty and staff uh, responded to that. Uh, since those initiative, those initial kind of shock and awe days, how, how has the coping been, been going? How are students doing? How are faculty and staff coping with this? Well, the faculty and staff, they've been phenomenal. Um, we couldn't do what we've done without everybody working collaboratively, coming together, problem solving, coming up with creative, innovative solutions. So we managed to move 2,000 over 2,000 sessions online in about three or four days. Mm. And um, we also ended up training about 1,200 faculty within about a week and a half period um, on online teaching. Mm. And we have a certification course for faculty to do that. It's been amazing. We have probably, we, we have close to, I would say, 92% of our courses uh, being handled remotely. We do have some courses, of course, you know, in the trades and in career technical education. You know, when you look at a course like welding or electricity, you can't, you can't teach sure. the same. You can do some lectures, but it becomes a safety issue. But our culinary arts program, for example, put together boxes of um, some equipment and some food for students to go home and, and create assignments. And that conversation is going back and forth. Our fashion design program handed out materials and other supplies to our students. They came and picked them up. And so um, I'm just so impressed with the creativity that the faculty are showing and how they're doing all this. Excuse me. Not sure. Along those lines, um, as you're talking about how everyone's been coping and, and the, the transition, the, the first question that we got in from a viewer is, can you, do you have a sense when the, when the school will physically reopen, when students will be back on campus, or is it still too early uh, to, to know? What we know now in the near future, the spring semester um, has been extended a bit, but the spring semester is all remotely and on, remotely done and online. Uh, we also just recently made a decision this week to put summer session online. Mm -hmm. We're guided by the chancellor's office guidelines, um, of course, by the state of California, Department of Education, Department of Health, um, our own city and our own Department of Health. But we're hoping in the fall we'll be able to come back and um, return to some level of normalcy. But, you know, quite honestly, this new normal um, is going to turn into a different normal, I think, in the long run when we do come back. The good thing is that I think our college and other community colleges and education in general will make some significant innovative uh, leaps forward and figuring out, you know, there's new modalities being tested. Faculty are quickly getting up to speed with more technology. Students are getting used to working and will get used to working remotely. So you know, I'm a, I'm a firm believer that there's silver linings in this. And when it's all over, 
We won't look like exactly the same college, but we will be a stronger college with more creativity and innovation in how we deliver education. Hmm. You, the, the, city, the, the city college boundaries, the college district boundaries extend beyond Long Beach. Um, I'm, I'm curious about your interactions and conversations the last couple of weeks with uh, leaders from Lakewood or Signal Hill, I think even Avalon, Catalina Island are in the, the, the district. Um, how, how has the reaction been? How have the conversations been with the, the, the district beyond the boundaries of, of Long Beach City? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, um, within Long Beach City, one of the first things I did was contact Dr. Jane Call Connolly and Superintendent Chris Steinhauser on Sunday. And I'm so appreciative for their um, advice and counsel. Um, we, we are still communicating. One of the wonderful things about Long Beach is we've had the college promise now for 12 years. And that has already, that, that set a framework of communication that a lot of communities don't have. But um, I've been in contact with, um, you know, contacted our legislators and elected officials right off the bat to let them know about the changes at Long Beach City College and what we were doing with the COVID-19. I've communicated by um, email and text with uh, our mayor in Avalon. Um, there's a lot of uh, back and forth going on in, in education in general, whether it's with the CSU, the UC or community colleges. But um, the wonderful thing is that people are just, you know, I, I'm on the CEO list for the community colleges and it's just a list of best practices. I'm really proud about the fact that Long Beach City College was out of the gate so quickly. And this is a testament to the vice presidents before I came, you know, they had already put together a COVID response team and um, that was meeting every day and they were flying by the time I got here. But um, we were um, anticipating so well what we had to do that um, a lot of the other community colleges are coming to us to say, okay, how did you deal with admissions and records for students? And, you know, how do you get information out to people who normally wouldn't be going online? We've had, a, we've had about 750,000 hits in social media about what we're doing with the um, COVID-19. Um, but um, I think that's going to be a feather in our cap when it's over. But um, anything we can do to help anybody else, of course, we're going to be doing that, including the private sector. We've had some conversations with people in the private sector, you know, because they know that we have to put you know, 26,000 students essentially online and how does that work and how do you do it so quickly? I'm going to remind everyone that's watching us right now to please send your questions in. We're talking with Luann Bynum, the interim superintendent and president of uh, Long Beach City College. Um, and uh, the next question that we have, uh, taking a look at this uh, question, probably on the, the minds of a lot of, of students is, Graduation ceremonies, are they officially canceled? Is there a, a plan? I imagine you have a lot of students who are, are wondering about uh, what that's, uh, what, what's gonna happen to that milestone. I know, and this is really, um, it's really hard, but we had to postpone commencement. We won't be holding the regular commencement that we always do. We're looking at alternatives, and some of those alternatives might be uh, uh, scheduling them later in the fall, perhaps maybe coming together with um, commencement next year. Um, we're looking at virtual commencement. Our staff right now are studying how we might be able to do that to ensure that students have an opportunity to celebrate where they are and what they're doing. I mean, we're, we're a couple, three months away from our students being able to graduate and then transfer into school. So this is a very exciting time for them and to have this happen is um, sad, you know, and I feel bad for our students, but we're doing everything we can to figure out how we can come up with a way to accommodate them still and recognize the great things that they've done at Long Beach and in, in their educational career. The kind of related, one of the questions that we got in from a viewer is about the financial implications of the impacts of this. Um, are there financial considerations about having to uh, refund uh, tuition or students having to pay back any financial aid or grants? Uh, what's been the guidance? What have been the decisions on, on the financial impacts for students? We spent a lot of time on that. Students do not have to pay back their financial aid. We're past a, a point in time anyways where they would receive their financial aid, whether they continued or not. Um, we're refunding students. You know, we have certain fees that we have. Um, 
ASV fees, we have parking fees. We're given a pro rata refund to students for the time that um, is left that they don't have to pay that back. So um, the college in general uh, is, is, of course, calculating everything. There's a cost to all of this. Sure. And, um, you know, our vet stadium gets uh, leased out often for events. And um, so that's going to be a revenue loss for us. There's a cost for us having to um, get extra equipment, having to train people, additional load hours for faculty to be able to deliver courses. So, you know, we're hoping that we get some of that reimbursed from FEMA. It's usually structural kinds of things, but, um, you know, we're being very careful about that. The Chancellor's Office has a fund um, for students. We get about $4 million from that fund to be able to help students who have really severe unmet, need, uh, unmet needs. We have a Viking vault where we hand out food to our students. We're continuing that, and we're getting we're we're compiling all of our different pots of money where we're allowed to do that to be able to make sure that we can stock up on that and serve more students because there's a really significant need. There's also a huge need for students that don't have um, Wi-Fi or laptops. So we're handing out Chromebooks and we're buying what we call I think it's called hotspots that. Um, students are able to use to be able to get online, but some students don't have any device at all. Right. And so, um, so it is, it's significant and it's going to be probably, you know, everybody talks about the fact that we're going into a recession. Goldman Sachs gave a 25% down in the second quarter. And I just heard the other day, they've, you know, amended it to 34% down. So we're all going to be hit by that and the state yeah. will be hit by that. So um, we just have to be very careful. I wanted to to talk at a higher level uh, economic development. I, I mean, you are one of the, the the most qualified people around to to talk big picture about what things are going to look like on the other side of this. Uh, I, I, you started to talk a little bit about how City College is going to look, um, but as as somebody that's been a leader in 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 this field for so many years. What are some of the things, the considerations about the local economy, about our city, about our community that you think are going to, to be different on the other side? What, what are some of the challenges, not just from an educational perspective, but what, what's on your mind when you think about our, our city, our community on the other side? You know, I think about the small businesses. Um, large corporations have, they're able to accommodate and adjust and come out of these kinds of things. Um, small businesses drive our economy as well throughout the state. And when you have to close down, whether it's a restaurant or it's a service that you provide in the community somehow, um, many businesses can only do that for a very, very short period of time. So people are being laid off. Um, employers are having to let go of people. And then, of course, when you let go of people, sometimes if you have health care, you don't have that health care. You know, one of the, um, the interesting stat is our, we run the small business development network for the L.A. region here at the college. And so we have a series of networks, uh, centers all over three county area. Well, we've seen normally each one of those centers gets about 50 to 60 clients a week coming in. Now they're seeing 50 to 60 to 70 a day. Hmm. And these are small businesses that, um, that need help desperately. Can I get a loan? Can I get a carryover loan of some kind? What do I do when I have to lay off my folks? And can I bring them back without any break in service? Um, you know, we have over 100 advisors that can help businesses. So I would just, one of the things I would say is to recommend people in the community and small business owners utilize those services. They're, they're free of charge to them. The SBA has put um, many more millions of dollars into loans for small businesses. They can get that information at the SBDC. If you go online and go to Long Beach City College and go to SBDC, um, you'll be able to click onto it. But, you know, that's really the big concern because, you know, we've been able to, you know, we had the Great Recession. Um, small businesses have really peaked in, in, in the growth that they've got. Now, all of a sudden, we're going to see a huge dent in that. So I'm concerned about that. And I'm concerned about how we can all help businesses just get back into business. 
with the the, the last uh, few minutes that, that we have, uh, any uh, last questions from viewers, please do send them in. Um, but I, I also, as I've been having conversations with leaders, one, one of the things that I've been hearing is, is about the misconceptions, about the misinformation, uh, working to correct inaccuracies or uh, there's a, there's a lot of things that are out right now that are just not not true that that uh, are can be dangerous if they're not responded to quickly. I'm wondering if you've encountered that. If if your leadership team, the vice presidents, have encountered anything, are there any misconceptions, misinformation um, that that you've seen or that people should know or not know about City College at this point? Um, no, we've been very careful about being factual with the guidance that we get from the right kinds of people in the agencies. Um, we are not getting a lot of inquiries about um, using certain treatments or anything like that. You know, our, our big message, you know, first and foremost, it's the safety, it's the health and safety of our faculty, staff, and our students. Secondly, it's academic continuity. But we get a lot of guidance and a lot of information that comes from both the state um, and the chancellor's office and other agencies, the CDC. And we make sure in our messaging um, that that goes directly to our faculty, our staff, and our students. If you were to go, we've got a coronavirus website. If you were to go into Long Beach, um, lbcc.edu, you'd see that banner right at the top. And you can go in individually and look at um, essentially buckets of information for faculty, for students, for the community, um, resources available, that kind of thing. So. Uh, we haven't run into that, but I know it's out there because I hear about it in the news and I think it's part of our responsibility to make sure that we stay smart and very communicative about what's real and not real. The last two questions that I've, I've got for you, you, you talked a little bit about um, looking towards the future from the educational perspective and educational delivery. Do you think that online classes are going to be even more prevalent? Do you think that there's going to be more uh, distance learning in the future for the college? Is it too early to predict something like that? No, it's not too early. And I think, yes, it is going to be one of the mo more significant modalities for delivering education. Um, you know, California's got a population of almost 40 million people. We've got 2.1 million students in the community college system. But we have millions of people out there that are adult learners. And in this day and age, in the 21st century economy, you have to be continuously learning to be able to stay, keep your skill sets up and stay abreast of what's happening. The biggest change, of course, is technology and the infusion of technology. But um, one of the ways to do that is through distance education and online learning. I, you know, I, again, a silver lining is faculty that were not trained in it are, are significantly being trained right now. And many of them are finding out that they like what they're doing online. But you know, we have to reach out. We can't just be a bricks and mortar institution where people come to us. We have to reach out and make our, our educational opportunities accessible to everybody in California. And mm. that adult population is gonna to have to continue to get educated. And that's where you're gonna see, I think, a big difference. So come to Long Beach City College. If that's a message I would have to everybody, you have a great opportunity now to come and take online classes that you didn't have before. So don't be hesitant. If you've lost your job and you've got some time, please come and look at our resources, look at those classes and let us help you to be able to reskill and retool because you're going to need that as we go on in the future. The, the, the last question that I always like to ask people is what's the one thing that you wish people knew more about uh, the, the work that you're doing or the institution that you're part of? You, you, you've given us a lot of uh, very interesting insights into things about City College that are more than just what happens in the classroom. Is there anything else that as, as we're still learning and still dealing with, with the, the impacts of this pandemic, is there anything else that the community should know about City College? What, what, what you're doing, what your team is doing, um, what, what's gonna happen next? What else should we know that we don't know? So there's a lot of things, but the one thing I think is really important, and I'll share it with everybody, is the issue with the digital divide. 
So we are going online, we are working remotely. We've got 40% of our students on financial aid. Um, we're hoping to get out um, close to 500 Chromebooks in the next 10 days or so. We've got a target of about 1,000. Our students have really significant unmet needs. You know, I kudos to um, Comcast and to Spectrum and to Human IT because they've been donating. We just had a donor come up recently that wants to provide about 250 Chromebooks, but if anybody sees it in their hearts and, and feels like they want to make a contribution, you know, I would welcome it. We would all welcome it. And um, our community has always been incredibly giving. But, you know, that digital divide, we're going to have to continue to keep working on it because it's going, going to keep people back if they can't get the tools and resources they need. So that's the message I would like to leave. Thank you. The, the last question is uh, looking ahead to September 15th. Um, if the trustees were to ask you to stick around permanently, is that something that you would consider wanting to, to do the job permanently and not just in the interim? Well, I'm on a six month contract, you know, and it can be extended six months to six months, but they are going to do a search. Um, but as long as they need me, I'll be here. All right. I'll leave it at that. Interim, interim Superintendent and President of Long Beach City College, Luann Bynum, thank you for your time today and for taking some questions from our viewers and for everyone uh, out there. Uh, tomorrow, live again at one o'clock, will be Long Beach Unified Superintendent Chris Steinhauser joining us, uh, who is getting ready to retire in a few months, but who has an incredibly busy plate. Uh, Luann, thank you for your time today. Thank you, David. We'll really appreciate there. it. Yeah. Good and work. a big Viking high five to the community. Ah, there you go. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.